Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline, I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 10th of June. Protests intensify in parts of India over controversial remarks against Islam's prophet. India-Bangladesh bus services resume after two-year hiatus due to COVID-19. And Nepal's capital Kathmandu chokes with garbage as villagers block road to landfill. And now for all the details. Protests intensified in parts of India by the Muslim community on Friday to demand the arrest of Nupur Sharma, the suspended spokesperson of ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, over her controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad. There were also reports of violence in some areas following clashes between protesters and the police. India's foreign ministry had earlier in a statement clarified the offensive comments did not reflect the views of the government after they also sparked backlash from several Muslim-majority countries. Massive protests erupted in parts of India after Friday prayers as the Muslim community came onto streets to express outrage and demand the arrest of Nupur Sharma the suspended spokesperson of ruling BJP, Bharti Janta Party, over her controversial remarks on Islam's Prophet Muhammad that they found insulting. India's foreign ministry in a statement this week clarified the offensive comments did not in any way reflect the views of the government after many Muslim countries condemned India over the remarks on the Prophet's private life during a recent heated TV debate. On Thursday, police in capital New Delhi also filed a complaint against Nupur Sharma for inciting people on divisive lines. Calls have also grown for a boycott of Indian products in Gulf countries, while the BJP has suspended Nupur Sharma and another leader, Naveen Kumar Jindal, for similar remarks on social media and asked its spokespersons to speak more responsibly in public. Yes, the protest also turned violent in some areas following clashes between the protesters and police. Nupur Sharma had on Sunday in a Twitter post said her comment on the Prophet was in response to the continuous insult and disrespect towards a Hindu god during the TV debate, but that she had withdrawn her statement. Many Indian TV stations regularly host debates on communal issues where Muslims and Hindu speakers shout at each other. In news from Pakistan, Pakistani police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the sudden death of prominent televangelist turned politician Amir Liaquat Hussain on Thursday. His burial on Friday was delayed after the police intervened and said a post mortem was to be conducted since he died in mysterious circumstances, but his family objected. Pakistani police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the sudden death of Amir Liaquat Hussain a prominent televangelist turned politician on Thursday. 50-year-old Amir Liaquat was found unconscious at his home in Karachi and was taken to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead, police chief of Sindh province Gulab Nami Memon said. His burial was on Friday delayed after his family refused an autopsy examination, while the police stopped the ceremony until a post-mortem was carried out since circumstances surrounding his death were not clear. But the family continued to object and the police asked them to approach court over the matter. Amir Liaquat reportedly felt chest discomfort on Wednesday night but had refused to go to the hospital. He was found motionless at his house by one of his employees who called the rescue service said. In news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan police fired tear gas on university students on Thursday as they protested outside police headquarters in capital Colombo, demanding the arrest of leaders of President Kotabaya Tadipaksa's party, who they say planned a violent attack on peaceful protesters at two permanent protest sites last month. 
Police fired tear gas at protesting university students in Sri Lanka's capital, Colombo, on Thursday, as the country suffers from an ongoing economic crisis. The protesters tried to dismantle metal barricades set up by police. The police responded by firing a barrage of tear gas. The students were demanding that police stop dragging their feet and arrest the leaders of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's party, who they say planned a violent attack on peaceful protesters at two permanent protest sites last month. President Gotabaya's elder brother Mahinda Rajpaksa resigned as Prime Minister last month after prolonged protest against the economic crisis turned deadly. On Thursday, Basil Rajpaksa, younger brother of the president and the country's former finance minister, announced he had resigned from parliament, the second from the influential family to step away from government amid the crisis. The three Rajpaksa siblings have been key players in Sri Lankan politics for decades, but are blamed by protesters who have taken to the streets in thousands in recent months for mishandling the island nation's economy. Sri Lanka's 22 million people are suffering the country's most serious financial turmoil in seven decades. In response to a request from the government, the United Nations on Thursday said it has launched a plan to provide 47.2 million US dollars of assistance between June and September to 1.7 million people worst hit by the crisis. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, is planning a staff-level mission in the coming weeks to Sri Lanka to engage on policy discussions on a program, the fund spokesman Gary Rice said in Washington on Thursday. Sri Lanka is in talks with the IMF for a loan package to help navigate its worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe requested on Wednesday to send a staff-level delegation to the crisis-hit country as soon as possible. More on news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan Parliament on Thursday passed the Electricity Amendment Bill after nine years amid the resistance from opposition lawmakers and industry trade unions. The bill, introduced on May 17 by the Minister of Power and Energy, will allow any person to apply for the issue of a generation license to generate electricity. The Sri Lanka Electricity Amendment Bill was passed after nine years by a majority vote in the parliament on Thursday amid resistance from opposition lawmakers and power industry trade unions in the state-run Ceylon Electricity Board. The revisions to the Sri Lanka Electricity Act were passed with 120 votes in favour of the amendments against 36 votes against them. The legislation will allow any person to apply for the issue of a generation licence to generate electricity. The amendments proposed to facilitate the new generation plants and overhead lines with an aim to fast-track renewable energy projects. The parliamentary debate also included a renewable energy deal with India's Adani Group to build a 500-megawatt wind power plant in northern coast. The opposition charged that the deal was key to the amendments to the 1989 Act. Taking to Twitter, Energy Minister Kanchana Vijasekra called the amendment essential to the quick development of renewable energy plans. He has earlier informed the parliament that the island nation is experiencing daily power outages due to a lack of dollars to import fuel to create electricity. Sri Lanka has been crippled by long power cuts due to lack of fuel. In news from Nepal, Nepal's capital Kathmandu is choking with heap of garbage, leaving residents and tourists to struggle with the problem. This came after villagers near a landfill site protested and barricaded roads to prevent garbage trucks from advancing. People held their noses and breaths as they walked past a large stinking heap of garbage in Kathmandu's Darbar Square on Thursday, which has been growing steadily after villagers near a landfill protested attempts to dump more trash there. The trash pile at the UNESCO World Heritage Site is one of the numerous spots in Kathmandu littered with huge and growing stacks of garbage, leaving residents and tourists to struggle with the problem. Hospital ma 
सफा कर um, I went to Durban Square. Mm -hmm. I paid 1,000 like rupees to come in, mm -hmm. and um, I know because of the earthquake in 2015, they're still building it. But I came. I wish I had my phone with me. I came across a massive pile of rubbish, Ooh. very big. For weeks, proper disposal of waste has become a chronic problem in the hill-ringed city after residents near a small dumping site at a village outside Kathmandu blocked garbage trucks from unloading. On Wednesday, hundreds of villagers, including women and children, chopped down trees and erected a barrier of rocks on the roads to Banchare Danda, forcing about 200 trucks laden with Kathmandu's garbage to return without dumping their load. The protesters pelted stones from hilltops, injuring three police personnel, witnesses said. Sriram Dhungana, a protester at the dumping site in Bancharidanda, said villagers would not allow trucks loaded with trash to enter, alleging authorities had done little to provide infrastructure and manage garbage. Moving on, cross-border bus services between India and Bangladesh resumed on Friday two years after their suspension due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The High Commission of India in Bangladesh on Twitter informed bus services were flagged off from Dhaka, a major step forward in enhancing affordable and people-centric connectivity. Similarly, officials in India's Tirupura state flagged off Agartala to Dhaka bus services. The development comes after the two existing rail services between the two countries resumed on May 29 while a third new cross-border train was also launched this month. Many Bangladeshi citizens come to avail specialized medical treatment in India. Officials said the resumption of transport services will help boost tourism and people-to-people -people ties. Devotees offered around 125,000 mangoes to a Hindu deity at a temple in India's western Vadodara city to celebrate Patotsav festival. The annual event marks the day of the installation of the deity's idol in the temple. A sea of devotees, mainly Vaishnavs, on Friday thronged the famous temple of Vrajatham Haveli in India's western Vadodara city to offer thousands of mangoes to Hindu deity Thakurji, who is believed to be a form of Lord Krishna, to celebrate the deity's 23rd Patotsa. The Patotsav is an annual celebration where devotees offer fruits, sugar, juices, flowers and incense to the deity. This year, they offered 1,25,000 mangoes to mark Patotsav, the day of the installation of the deity's idol in the temple. And this is the first time of Thakur Ji, in the 23rd of Patotsav, today we have a very important question of the question of the question of the आज हजारों की तादाद में केवल बरोड़ा से नहीं लेकिन गुजरात राज्य से आज वैष्णव लोग यहां दर्शनार्थ पधारे हैं वैष्णव हिंदूज आर कंसीडर्ड एज वन ऑफ द मेजर हिंदू डिनोमिनेशंस फॉलोअर्स ऑफ वैष्णविज्म बिलीव इन ओनली वन हिंदू डेटी व्हिच इज लॉर्ड वैष्णो एंड हिज इनकारनेशंस इन एन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड वेडिंग अफेयर 24-year-old Kshama Bindu from India's western Vadodara city married herself this week with full-blown Hindu rituals. She applied vermilion on her forehead and wore Mangal Sutra, a black beaded necklace donned by married women, making it India's first sologamy. Dressed in colorful Indian attire, family members and friends of Bindu danced to the tunes of Indian Bollywood songs in small post-wedding celebrations. In a video shared by Bindu, she thanked people who supported her and said many people wanted to attend her wedding and several were interested in sologamy. Her wedding was due to take place on June 11 but was rescheduled as she faced challenges with arranging the venue and priest. जी मैं बहुत ज़्यादा शौक थी शादी के बाद खुशी से शौक नहीं बोलूँगी सरप्राइज बोलूँगी कि एक्चुअल में जो मुझे करना था वो हो गया वो पॉसिबल है और वो मैंने कर लिया तो मैं बहुत ही ज़्यादा खुश थी। Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.